Over the years I've come to realise that actually what I enjoy doing is working with children who present me with a challenge so that what we can do is provide something for children that is special that they might not have otherwise. And that's my motivation I think for coming to schools in challenging circumstances because all my headships have been in schools that have been a challenge. Kingsfield School is an amalgamation of two failing schools. It opened four years ago in Chatteris, a small town in the Fens in North Cambridgeshire. Susan Dowling, who was brought in as head, made improving behaviour and attendance her top priorities. We found that if we were lining children up on the playground in the morning, it's a very uncalm start to the day because the children are pushing and shoving and getting agitated. Um, it allows children to come running in late to join a line. So children, we, we were starting at, in theory, at quarter to nine, but for some classes it was nearly five to nine before we got into school. So we decided to try a different approach in the mornings. We open the classroom doors, and between 25 to nine and quarter to, the children can come into their classrooms. We found that that's made a very calm start to our day because the children are in and they're calm from the minute they walk through the door and then gates get shut very promptly at quarter to nine and anybody that's late has to come via the office. Um, and children don't like doing that, they'd much rather be in their classroom on time with everybody else. Attendance in schools in challenging circumstances is a big issue. You have to have a very kind of ordered and safe kind of lifestyle to be able to run to the clock. What Susan Dowling has instituted there is not the lining up in the playground, but teacher being in the classroom, children coming in gradually over time so that the teacher is there to establish a kind of a presence in the room, calm things down, and avoids all that ridiculous hassle that there is with children lining up and punching each other. I think the impression people get when they come and look at our school is deceptive. Um, we've worked really hard over the last four years to create a very calm, and calming environment. But that's been hard won, really. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to all our visitors this morning who've come to join us for Miss Dunster's assembly. This morning we are going to take to the seaside. It is still challenging. We have a very low baseline when children come into school. Lots of children coming into school with um, limited skills at, at four and five. Uh, so we fall within the, the county's uh, lowest quartile for baseline and 32% of our children are on our special needs register. Thank you very much for telling us about the seaside today and in the past. Let's give them another big round of applause. <laughs> we also have quite a few children with fairly challenging behaviour. It was one of the things that when I first visited before I'd even taken up post, when I interviewed all the staff about what they were expecting, what they were hoping for, without exception they all said managing behaviour better because I think what they were expected to do was manage behaviour in their own classroom but there wasn't a whole school approach. So what we've looked at is a whole school approach that's based on golden rules, circle time and golden time and for most of our children most of the time that's been a really positive incentive. Every Friday we have golden time, which is 20 minutes time of playing activities which we get to choose and um, some people aren't that good and first of all they get a warning and then um, they lose a minute which means they get a minute off of the time of the playtime on gold time. This quiet courtyard in the centre of the school fulfils a variety of roles. The aim of that has always been that it would be a sanctuary area for those children who choose to have somewhere quiet rather than the melee of the, the playground, but also that it's an area where we put quite high levels of staffing so that if we feel a child needs to be guided in their play and learn how to play better, they will be directed to go in the courtyard. Two decorated equals twelve. Okay, so what's the inverse then? If we're talking about a takeaway sum here, the calculation. The school's been working hard at making members of the traveller community feel welcome. Twelve and two equals fourteen. Okay. 
there is a traveller site in our catchment area. So we do have quite a few travellers who come to our school and we have quite a lot of children who were formerly of the traveller community who are now settled in Chatteris. How can you find that one for me? What we found is that we really need to build confidence of the parents in us as a school and it's actually just breaking down barriers to say that school is a place that's safe for their children to be um, and that we welcome their contribution to our community. And we've been particularly pleased this year to be part of a, a, a national pilot for Gypsy Roma Traveller pupils. Um, and as part of that, we've managed to have extra funding to be putting it in additional support to raise standards of, uh, of achievement for Traveller pupils. Can we all stand in this square? A member of the Traveller Education Service runs a weekly social skills club for children from a variety of backgrounds. You're working as a team, that's what I like to see. We hope that they develop sharing skills and cooperative skills so that they then can take those skills into the, the rest of the class and into the wider community so that they, they will learn to appreciate and understand other children of other heritages. Shift it forwards and then put your feet onto the other one. I think we are seeing that there is progress because you can see the children cooperating with each other. And over the year, they're more settled than they were initially when we started. And they will talk to each other and praise each other more. We're going to listen to a piece of music where a story might be set. Just close your eyes. I want you to be thinking about the setting and how it makes you feel. On any day coming into school, you will see a lot of drama a lot of role play, um, a lot of talking partners activities where we get children to engage with talking and raising the standard of their vocabulary. Did it make you think of any particular place? Emma? Um, a dark and spooky forest. A dark and spooky forest, excellent. Ryan, what about you? A graveyard at night. A graveyard at night, so dark as well. One of the ways that we've raised standards here is actually um, giving people the opportunity to go and observe other people in classrooms. George. I am an old, dusty, creaking church. Creaking church, what an excellent word. In terms of the more formal monitoring, we worked particularly hard with the leadership team because they're, they're new and young to that role, um, to develop their skills in going in and what to look for in classrooms to support people um, in getting better, but also to be able to recognise what is good already. Uh, I think one of the real strengths of the lesson was the fact that you manage the children so fantastically. You have some children in your class who do present challenges. Schools in challenging circumstances can find it hard to attract staff, especially in rural areas. I think probably, particularly for young staff, the social opportunities aren't in a rural area as much as they are in the urban areas. And obviously in a rural area you don't get the um, additional funding that you get into, say, as London Waiting. Keeping good staff and making them feel supported is crucial. When I first arrived in the school, I was very um, new to being a team leader and I went to Susan many times with issues with my team and she advised me informally on many occasions of how to deal with different situations. She was, she's always been very supportive of me. And in performance management interviews, I've been given targets specifically for me. As well as that, she's really boosted my self-esteem as to how I feel about my teaching because in my previous experiences, I was never regularly monitored. But now I feel that I know what my strengths are and where I need to go next in my teaching and my leadership. What Susan talks to me about is being in the school as much as possible. It's very easy for heads to be out of their school and swanning around and going to conferences and so on. But she makes a point of being with her staff, being around, being supportive, recognising the challenges that some of those staff face so that she will go in when there's an incident and she will try and not only support them at that time but work with staff to help them to deal, the, deal with those kind of issues in the future. Next, handwriting. Do handwriting. Good. 
the leadership is great in school and because I, I completed my induction year here I had an assigned mentor to me who I work with really closely and sort of taught me through all the potential problems that might come up and the issues involved in the school and sort of the surrounding areas so I think that the leadership is really strong and it's something that I would say is a strength compared to some of the schools that I did my teaching placement at where I didn't have the support that I've had in my induction year and over the past couple of years. And I need to have the systems in place to sort of be an effective class teacher. So we're going through the suggestion box. Oh, here's something for a day like today. I think we should have some lessons outside. One of the really yeah. nice things in Kingsfield was the school's council and the suggestion box. And I sat down and I talked to children about the kinds of things that they were that were in the suggestion box. And I was really struck by how imaginative and clever and thoughtful a lot of those kind of ideas were. In our class we said we want to um, have a vegetable patch and um, Miss King said, who's going to pick the vegetables? And we all said, me! And um, <laughs> she said, who's going to eat the vegetables? And we all said me and she said me as well. When those ideas are taken up by, by the, st the staff, then children themselves feel that they are being recognised. Yes, we have something important to say. I think the worst thing is that you ask for children's opinion and then nothing ever happens, so they get quite sort of cynical and disillusioned. We've worked really hard over the last couple of years to get parents in. We've operated a number of evenings to try and inform parents about the curriculum. Our last one was an ICT curriculum evening. We've done the same for maths and same for English, so we have evenings that are early so that children can be involved in it and it's the children doing the telling, not the staff, although obviously there's a staff input as well. Since the amalgamation of the two schools, we've seen a great improvement really in the communication uh, between the parents and the, the staff. I think they, they want you to be more involved. She seems to have pulled the school round. It's changed certainly since she's been here, I feel. We've moved from being a school with very, very poor rates to having a school that's actually now delivering um, some very good results. Not necessarily in our SATs all the time, but when we look at the value added for the children, the governing body firmly believe we can bring every child on to their best ability and through Susan's leadership, we begin to show good, good results. Our head is very strong and she's got a very good vision of what she wants our school to be like. And she's very clear at communicating that to all the staff, including the midday supervisors, the TAs, and everyone's involved in the school development plan. So we all feel part of it. I've been a head teacher a long time now, um, and it's still something I really enjoy and I want to do but it's a challenge. Um, every day I sort of think, OK, what, what's going to hit me today? Um, you know, it can be children kicking off, it can be um, staffing issues, it can be staff being stressed because the class are being difficult. Um, I got bitten and punched and kicked last week um, by a child who was really emotionally disturbed and you have to just deal with things as and when they come, but, but yes, I still don't want to do anything else.